Yo, 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 yo. Um, oh, yeah. What am I doing here? I'm here to talk about <clears throat> my top 10 films of 2011. Now, this is a preliminary list. This is what we'll call it. The top 10 films I've seen in 2011. Um, there's a lot I haven't seen yet. Like, most of the big ones that came out in December and November, I didn't go see. Because, honestly, like, I'm just... Like stuff like Hugo and like the one coming out War Horse now and a lot of them that came out it just didn't really get me very excited. Um, so I will watch them. I will give them their fair shake when uh, you know when I get around to them. So there will be a definitive 2011 list sometime next year. But for now, these top ten films I saw in 2011. Um, if you're wondering what I'm drinking, it's water in a, in an old lemonade bottle. I've been drinking out of this bottle for fucking months. It's kind of disgusting, but I do it cause I'm po yo. All right. Now it's my usual beverage, water in a can and I want to warn you right now. Let's probably go into two videos because I do have ten films to talk about. I'm not gonna go in depth on any of them, but knowing how I ramble on and I don't edit and shit, this will probably be slightly longer than fifteen minutes. But um, just in general, I, I before I get into the lists, I thought it was a really good year for films. Honestly, yeah, there was a lot of remakes. There's a lot of sequels. Shit ton of stupid comic book superhero movies that nobody cares about or at least I didn't care about I'm not a fan of Green Lantern or I'm not a fan of Thor or Captain America it's cool if you're into that shit but I if it's not Batman or like even Spider-Man or something I don't really fucking care I'd be I'd be interested in a Spawn film they do another R-rated Spawn but anyways uh I still think there there was a lot of really good stuff. Even some of like the summer popcorn stuff was good. Like, uh, I thought Rise of the Planet of the Apes was a lot of fun. I'm sure like Harry Potter that was great for Harry Potter fans. I haven't seen any of them, so I avoided it. I maybe we'll do a marathon one day and like watch them all. But you know there was a lot to like, and I thought that the films that were were good were very good like they they shone brighter than than usual and if if it's a bad year i'll say it like i thought last year was so so like yeah there were things i liked like i loved catfish and i loved the town i thought the town was amazing but a lot of the stuff was like even the ones i liked i'm like oh that was pretty good you know i'm not afraid to say it was a shitty year i remember uh like 2007 or whatever it was i was like man that was a shit year uh, like the best picture was like no country for old men or even like last year look what one best picture the king's speech was that really that good i didn't think so like i thought it was all right but but this year i actually had to cut a couple things from my list and i haven't even seen everything i want to yet or like at least all the big films that you should see but anyway, so that's my little intro about it. But And if you want to read my top ten list, it is on my blog. I will link it down below. And uh, you can go ahead and read it. But uh, I'm mostly going to tell you everything that I said in that. And I'm not really happy with my writing in that blog post. Uh just wasn't uh wasn't satisfied with the outcome but i was just happy to be able to share more you know movies with more people so um i wasn't like i was very happy with my zelda review which is out there you can find it on vagary.tv i review uh skyward sword <coughs> be warned that my review will piss people off but anyways enough i've gone on for five minutes not really saying anything Let's get to the list. 
Uh, number 10 is Trust. It's a film directed by David Schwimmer. I don't know who wrote it. I'm not going to look it up. But it's basically about this high school girl who is talking with this other high school kid online. She's friends with him online. They're kind of sparking up a romance a little bit. He seems like a great kid. He's like an athlete like her, this and that. And then she goes to meet him. And, of course, he's like a sexual predator who's like twice her age. And, uh, you know, it's a terrible encounter devastates her and once other people begin to find out what happened um it's almost worse than what happened to her in the first place i thought this was a very challenging very honest film almost to a fault where people won't like it because it doesn't give you like these cookie cutter answers for these types of things it just kind of explores what this would do to this girl and her family and stuff. And um, definitely not the most entertaining film of the year or not the most uplifting or anything, but I thought it takes a very kind of taboo subject matter and tackles it in a way that's very brave. Um, And it's uncompromising. Like the ending and stuff is going to piss people off. And it's going to piss some people off how they treat the sexual predator like it's almost sympathetic towards him at points um but i just thought the girl gave a great performance i like i said i thought they approached the subject matter in a very bold way i thought david schwimmer did a really good job directing he really shows off how the internet has become a part of our lives and how we use it and he does it like it's no big deal a very good film that a lot of films kind of like the internet exists in it, but it doesn't show how much it's changed our everyday lives. And this, you know, it's really cool. Like they're doing, she'll be like texting or something at dinner and they're showing the text like that she's sending across the screen complete with like internet short, shorthand, like LOL and stuff like that. And you is just a you stuff like that. And they do it like it's no big deal. Like he's not even trying to show off or be flashy. It's just, that's what the story demanded. Um, so overall, I thought it was great. Um, you know, it's kind of like the dramatic version of something like Hard Candy, where Hard Candy was just like a thriller. This is like turning that into a drama. And I think it's as, as strong a drama as Hard Candy was a thriller. And if you've seen Hard Candy, you know that's pretty uh, pretty uh, strong praise. So anyways, that's number 10. It's Trust from David Schwimmer. Uh, I'll just mention Clive Owen and Catherine Keener as the parents were also very good. Catherine Keener is kind of underused, but Clive Owen's great. Number nine is Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was really surprised by this one. I mean, I knew it was produced by Jed Apatow, but that doesn't mean shit. But, you know, you figure he has a, a standard of quality, but there's still a question. Could the girls be as funny as the guys? And... They could. It was a very funny movie, but not just funny, also very heartfelt and filled with characters that you like and you care about. I thought Kristen Wiig was excellent in it. This, the role should make her a star. She should be demanding, you know, more than 10 million bucks a movie or whatever now. I think. I think she's that good. Uh, I thought Melissa McCarthy who plays like the overweight free spirit of the bunch. She gives a very brave and very funny performance. It's just a smart, raunchy comedy and, and very heartfelt. Um, and basically what it is, is uh, Kristen Wiig plays this girl, Annie. She's like a 30 something failed entrepreneur. She had like a bakery that went under and she scrapes by. She works a crappy retail job. And and she's losing her friend, Maya Rudolph, who's about to get married. And she's got engaged. And, you know, she kind of feels like she's being left behind. And this is something I think people go through. And, uh, you know, but she tries to, you know, put on her best poker face to for her friend and just be there and try to be a good 
bridesmaid and get along with the other bridesmaids who she doesn't know so well. And it's very funny. John Hamm has a very funny part as like this guy that's just like banging uh, Kristen Wiig and doesn't give a shit about her. He's very funny in it. Uh, like I said, Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, Maya Rudolph. She's such a goof in it. I love her. Um, and this is directed by Paul Fig or Fig Fig. I don't know. Let's we'll say Fig. I don't know what he's done before, but it was written by Kristen Wiig and Annie Mumolo, and they need to write another script and do another comedy real quick, because this was great. This is a huge success at the box office, and it makes sense. It's a movie made for the ladies, sort of, you could say, but, you know, guys love it just as much. I remember running into a guy in the bathroom, and he started talking to me, and I was like weirded out because you don't talk to dudes in the bathroom but he's like what movie are you watching i'm like pissing i'm like uh bridesmaids he's like oh man that movie's so fucking funny can you believe the part that just happened and i'm like yeah dude i'm taking a piss but uh the only thing is it does kind of there's one part that's not as funny it involves bodily fluids and functions and stuff it kind of felt like the rest of the movie was above that and then they go into this like routine where everyone's food poisoned and shitting everywhere it wasn't that great i mean there's much funnier like th there's a part when they're on an airplane kristen wiggs afraid of flying and she gets all fucked up so to try to deal with flying and god i was laughing so hard during it anyway that's number nine it's bridesmaids i think if uh you're avoiding it you should not <laughs> uh, it's number eight is the tree of life which I've talked I've talked about most of these on my channel, but why not give them their due? Tree of Life is the story I'm reading from my blog of a boy's adolescence in 1950s suburbia, uh, told from the creation of the universe until the end of time. You know, basically, it takes like this vast scope of everything and filters it through the very small lens of a brief moment in time in one person's life. And it it really intimately captures, you know, this kid's boyhood. But also, you know, very beautifully encompasses everything. And it's very unique. You won't see a lot of films like that. Uh, it's, it's not everyone's cup of tea. My co-host on Movie Dudes, was, he, he, I think he abstained from giving it a rating because he was like, I don't even know what I just watched. And he kind of gave up part of the way through it it's absolutely it's bonkers film i remember saying on movie dudes that this is like the best acid movie since like the wall and i wouldn't know but it's been a long time since i've done anything like that but i can imagine it would be very eye-opening on the acid you'd be like i understand everything uh just a very beautiful film, like beautifully shot and beautiful music playing throughout it. The cinematography and the music are so good that they almost make like the performances from like Brad Pitt and the kid Hunter McCracken, like they almost feel like background noise at points, because it's not really so much about the story as it is just a, like a celebration of life, you know, in a very micro and macro level. Um, I don't know, it's utterly unique, and it's very beautiful, and I think you should, like I said, you might not, <laughs> it might not be your cup of tea at the end of the day, but if you're a serious, like, fan of film, you should give it a shot, at least, I think. Um, I think Brad Pitt and Hunter McCracken, though, are both very good in it. Um, you know, I think Terrence Malick, I haven't seen a lot of his other films, but... You know, this director, he was working on this a long time, and, you know, it's very self-indulgent, but it is, you know, by, will be considered by some a masterpiece. To me, I just think it's, you have to see it. Um, I liked it myself, personally, but, I mean, obviously, if I liked it, if I put it at number eight, but I could totally, I wouldn't hold it against you if it wasn't on your top ten, put it that way, but... 
anyways, uh, we will continue in part two of this video. Hopefully two of two. We'll see. I'm not going to rush it. All right, so head on over to the next video, I guess. And if you don't, Merry Christmas and thanks for watching.